My name is Maria Lawton, and I was born on the island of San Miguel in the village called Rosario. My dad was the only one in his family to immigrate to the United States, so I'm blessed when visiting the island to be surrounded by my family and being able to cook and share recipes from the old country is my way of staying connected to my roots. Being Portuguese is something I am so proud of. My heritage has inspired my book, my book has inspired this show, and hopefully my show will inspire you. Over the years, one of my biggest requests has been how to prepare salted cod, better known as bacalhau. In Portugal, they say there are over a thousand recipes on making salted cod. In today's episode, I'm going to show you one of my favorite dishes, bacalhau agumsh sa. Today I'm here in the city of New Bedford, Massachusetts, where 46% of the population is of Portuguese descent. And we played a major role in the rich fishing history. New Bedford's ports are one of the highest valued ports in the nation. From scallops to haddock and codfish, over $369 million worth of seafood have crossed their docks. If you grew up in the area, chances are in the summertime your Portuguese neighbors and friends would have codfish hanging from the clothesline. Now we're heading to Fall River, Massachusetts, a city that at one point was the number one textile manufacturer in the world. Because Fall River has more citizens of Azorean descent than in all of the Azores, it's often considered the 10th island. Hi, I'm here now at Shav's Market, located in Fall River, Massachusetts, and we're picking up our key ingredients for our dish, bacalhá agumshtsa. Now, if you don't live near a Portuguese market, you can always pick up these key ingredients at any international markets, as well as your local grocery store. For today's dish, we'll need the following ingredients. One to two pounds of drained salted cod, six medium to large potatoes, two large onions, three cloves of garlic, six tablespoons of olive oil, three eggs, black olives, a small bunch of parsley, and salt and pepper to taste. When purchasing salted cod, be sure to pick out a piece that has a thick center. Avoid the fillets that contain more tail than anything else as that part is flat and has very little meat. Also, check to see if the cod has bones. I prefer the boneless and skinless portions. But note, it usually costs more for that convenience. Now some people will disagree and say that salted cod with bone intensifies the flavor. In the end, it's up to you to experiment and decide for yourself. When we come back, I'm gonna show you how to turn all of this into the most amazing Portuguese dish. Gumshtsa was the son of a rich 19th century merchant in Porto. The family fortune dwindled and the son had to find a job at restaurant Lige Bonens, a restaurant in downtown Porto where he created this wonderful dish. Now I know today we're at Shav's Market and I showed you that long beautiful piece of salted cod that you can buy there um, and you actually can buy it by the pound. But for most of you who do not live near a Portuguese market or an international market that carries that, the best thing to do is to go to your local market and you'll be able to find it there. I have here what you would find at that local market and that is a one pound of salted cod that comes from Norway and it comes in this beautiful little box here and it's just a, a one pound it's just one pound and usually on certain meals that you're making you're using about one pound one and a half today we're using about a, a pound and a half because uh, I'm using a larger dish but this is what I picked up at the store and you'll be able to do that so there's no problem of you finding it the key thing on salted cod is having it rehydrated now, when I first started learning how to make this dish, it was a little intimidating to find out how to rehydrate the fish. Because if you read the package, it says to boil the, the fish. Other people would say, oh, you've got to soak it for three days. I've had people say, oh, two days. It's really 24 hours. Um, my 
the way that I like it because I like it a little salty. So if you like it less salty, you just soak it for a little bit longer. But personally, I like it for 24 hours. So what you do is you would get the salted cod, you would put it in a bowl and you would rinse it out and you would automatically for the next 24 hours, uh, replace the water with fresh water. Keep, keep constantly doing that every so many hours. Uh, in the summertime, you have to make sure that you refrigerate this while it's uh, rehydrating. And then on the very last soaking, now this is the key thing on when it comes to a trick or something that my mom and my tia Lalia would always say that needed to be done, is the last soaking that I do is in milk. Now, for those of you looking going, milk, I've never heard of that. Well, one of the things that my aunt would say by soaking it in milk would make the cod creamier. Now, I'm not telling you that that's the way that you should do it. I'm just showing you the way that I do it. And you really need to experiment. Um, and that way you can see for yourself the difference between having it soaked in just water versus the last soak being in milk. What I'm showing you here is after it's been soaked in milk, how beautiful and how hydrated it looks. It's nice and soft to the touch. It's just a beautiful piece of uh, fish. And so you've got the before and you've got the after, and this is what you're looking for. And when you touch it, it, it just bends right in and it's soft and moist and it's delicious. So now we're going to be taking this and making it into a wonderful, delicious dish. Okay, so I've already boiled the cod. I took the pound and a half of the rehydrated cod, put it in water, turned on the heat, medium high, and I let it boil for about a good half hour. And the way to check it is, is just take a fork, um, go into it, see how it flakes, and it flakes up nicely, it is done. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to drain the, um, the water off of the cod, and we're gonna do that as we speak right now. And then what we have here is the completed boiled cod. And as you can see how flaky it is, this is done. It looks delicious. Next we'll need our six medium to large potatoes, peeled and kept whole. Add them to the boiled water and parboil them, making sure not to overcook your potatoes or you'll have a difficult time slicing them after. Once the potatoes are parboiled and sliced, leave them aside. In a separate saucepan, we're going to hard boil our eggs. We're gonna be using these for garnish once our dish is complete. Next, we'll slice our onions and cloves of garlic. The next step now is we're going to saute the sliced onions. And what you do is you're gonna get a saute pan and you're gonna put a little bit of olive oil at the very bottom of the pan and you're gonna add your sliced onions. And then once we get this nice and sauteed, nice and golden, we're gonna add our chopped garlic. Now that we've done all our parboiling, our sauteing, all of this, we're gonna get started on actually putting the dish together. So I'm going to set the oven at 350. And once we do that, we're gonna preheat that for a little bit. And that gives me enough time to assemble it. So we start off with the casserole dish. Any casserole size is fine. Uh, you can use half of this, half of everything in the amount. You can double this. It really, there's no right or wrong. So we're gonna just, at the very bottom, we're just gonna put a little bit of olive oil, and we're gonna start first with the potatoes. So what you're gonna do is you're just going to layer one layer of potatoes. So now our next layer is going to be of the bakaya. So we're gonna take that and we're gonna shred them. We're gonna shred the cooked cod over the slices of potatoes. See how beautiful that is? There's no right or wrong. 
you can make it small pieces, you can make larger pieces of the cod. Again, it's to your preference because you have a pound and a half and it's to your discretion on how much you want on each layer. But I know on this pan, I'm gonna have at least two layers of cod as well as potatoes and onions. And our next layer that we're gonna be putting over the fish is going to be the sauteed onions and garlic. You're going to be putting that layer over the potatoes, the cod, and then these onions that have been sauteed with garlic and olive oil. And I know we don't have smell vision here going on, but it smells wonderful and it's going to taste even better. And so here we have the next layer. It's this easy. And then we have, once again, the potatoes. Now, growing up, my mother would make this dish on Fridays. Uh, Friday was definitely a fish day. With having this dish, it brings wonderful memories back to me from my mom making this. And um, this was a very special treat for us because usually what she would do is she would boil the potatoes, boil the cod, we'd have some chickpeas, some olive oil, some onions, and that would be our dish um, with of course some wonderful bread. But when she went and did this, it takes a little bit more time you know, it's a little bit more time consuming and getting all the ingredients ready and sauteed and cooked separately instead of everything being cooked together. But it's well worth it. And it, as you can see, it's very easy. So now again, the potatoes are done. Next layer, more fish. There we go. And this is using up all the cod that I've boiled, and you don't want to waste any of it. So the rest goes in there. And now the final layer is going to be the onions before we put it into the oven. So here we go. what happens is, is once this is all layered, it's going to go in the oven and we're going to bake it for a good, oh, I want to say like 25 to 30 minutes, depending on your oven. Um, because what's going to happen is, is the very top of this layer is going to get an extra golden color. So that's what you're looking for. So if your oven cooks very fast, you're going to have it a quicker time. Mine cooks about 30 minutes. So this is our end result before it goes into the oven. We have these amazing layers. So what we're going to do now is we're going to be putting this in the oven. So now that we've removed it from the oven, as you can see, it's a nice golden color on top. Now you can use your own creativity on how you want to garnish, but the way that I typically garnish, the same way my mom would do, would be some chopped parsley, some sliced eggs, and also some black olives. Now again, no right or wrong on how you do this. I want to share with you a little story of when I was visiting in St. Michael last time, and I stayed with my cousin Joe Manuel and his family and they made this beautiful codfish dish also, and I thought it was gonna be this dish. And instead of also doing sauteed onions, they also added sauteed uh, bell peppers. So they had red peppers and green peppers in there in between, and uh, besides olive oil in there, they added some white wine, because, you know, everything is great, a little bit of wine. And um, so, again, there is no right or wrong. The way I'm making it here is just to show you exactly how, um, how my family did it but again you can make this your own in your own family and how you like it so if you don't care that for too much onions make less onions if you don't care for hard-boiled eggs on top you omit that and so what I'm doing I'm just gonna lay it out here 
I'm going to take some of the olives and put that, some whole, some sliced. And then last is just a little bit of the parsley on top. And here we go. No good meal is complete without dessert, and this is one of my favorites, coconut lemon cake. The first time I ever tried this cake that we're making today was at my niece Emma's birthday party. Her great aunt Fatima made it for her, and let me tell you, I'm so glad she did because she shared the recipe with me, and now I'm going to share this recipe with you. For our dessert today, we're gonna to need six large eggs at room temperature, two cups of sugar, two cups of all-purpose flour, one tablespoon of baking powder, one cup of melted butter, five tablespoons of the shredded coconut, and one lemon zested. So our next step is we're going to take the six eggs and we're going to separate them. We're gonna separate the egg yolk from the egg white. When you're doing that, it's real important that you do not get any of that egg yolk into the egg white because what we're going to do after is we're going to whip those egg whites into nice peaks. And if there is any egg yolk in it, it will not be as fluffy as it can be. So let's start separating them. This is easy as making sure that the egg yolk goes back and forth into the egg and making sure that we also don't put any of the eggshell in there. Now that we've separated the eggs, we're going to take a hand mixer and we're going to beat the egg whites until it forms some nice peaks. So here we go. All right, our next step is to make the batter. We have the six egg yolks here in the bowl, and we're going to add the sugar, the two cups of sugar, and we're gonna start mixing that in together. Now we're gonna mix it nice enough that it just combines the sugar and the egg yolks. And then once that is combined, we are going to add the one cup of the melted butter. So the melted butter goes in there. And we're going to start mixing everything together again. Okay. Now that that's mixed up really well, we are going to add the flour and the baking powder. And what I like to do, this is almost before it goes in there, is I take the baking powder, I put it into the flour, and you can sift this together. There's some people that like to sift the flour and the baking um, powder together. I just like to take a fork and kind of mix it in nicely. We're going to mix this flour and baking powder uh, together and pour it in a little at a time into the egg, sugar, and the melted butter. So let's, that's nice and mixed in. And we're going to just do a little at a time. Now, as you're doing this, the batter is going to get a little bit harder and harder to mix, but that's okay. Um, just keep going at it. You can go a little bit faster on it. Just as long as everything gets well incorporated together, that's all that matters. It 
really does get a little bit harder, but that's okay. Just hold on tight to that mixer because it'll be worth it. You're going to now take a spoon, mix in the five tablespoons of the coconut, as well as the one lemon that you've zested. And you're just gonna mix that in by hand. I learned the hard way of not doing it with the mixer because all the coconut and the lemon all ended up at the bottom of the mixers and you don't wanna do that. You wanna make sure that you do this part by hand, okay? And now that you've mixed that in, the last part, because you're thinking, oh my God, this is so dry. How are you ever going to pour this into a cake? Well, the egg whites that you've beaten up are going to be added onto this, and it's going to add moisture, and it's also going to add the softness that's needed in the cake. So what you're going to do is you're just going to take a little bit of the egg whites. The key ingredient to add air into cakes is to fold in, not mix and once you do this little at a time keep adding more of the egg whites and folding it in cutting into the and folding it in and already as you can see the batter is softening up already see the difference in the batter how nice and moist it's becoming and you've just added all that air into it so it'll be nice and light next step is you're going to preheat your oven at 350 and we're going to grease and flour a tube pan now this is what I have here that I'm going to be using today but you can use a bump pan whatever pan that you'd like of your choice after you grease and flour you're going to pour in the batter and just and just make sure that you even it out a little before it goes in the oven. And there it is. Perfect. So now it goes in the oven. So now after an hour, um, you're going to remove the cake pan from the oven. And what you're going to do is you're going to check to see if it's cooked through. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take the skewer and you're going to insert it into the cake. And once you insert it and remove it, if it comes out wet to the touch, it's not done. If it comes out nice and dry, it's done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to wait 15 minutes. We're going to take this plate. Now this is the way I like to do it. Some people like to take the pan and flip it over. I like to take the plate and put it over the pan. For me it's a little bit easier but you can figure out the way that you like best. And what I like to do is I just like to do this over the pan and then I flip it over. Very easy. And you remove it. And there it is. The next step in decorating the cake is making a glaze. And this is the secret to the nice, delicious, moist cake. And what you're gonna need in a saucepan over medium heat, you're gonna add one cup of milk, whether it's whole milk, skim milk, it's up to you, one cup of granulated sugar, and you're going to now bring this up into a, uh, a low boil. And once that happens, you'll be able to pour it over the cake. Now that the glaze is done, what we're going to do is we're going to take that skewer and we're going to puncture the cake with it so that once you puncture it all around, it will allow for the glaze to get into the cake. And that is the secret. So now you can share that secret with others or you can keep it to yourself. I won't tell. So it's as simple as that. You can have a lot of fun doing this. You can get all your frustrations out on the cake. Poor little cake. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take that glaze 
and you're going to literally pour it around the cake. And once that happens, the cake just takes it and absorbs it all up. And it is just incredible. Now, one of the key things I should have said even beforehand is when we're doing this, you wanna make sure that the container you have the cake in has the room to take this glaze. Because if you're using a flat plate, the glaze will get all over the place if it doesn't make it into the cake. Now we're going to decorate with the shredded coconut. And I have here about two cups of coconut. You can use three, you can use four, you can use one, it's really up to you. And what I do, and what you can do also, is literally, I just like to just place it on top of the cake. And again, like I said, this is two cups of coconut. It's something that my family really loves coconut. So for us, this is perfect. And now we have our coconut lemon cake. Bon appétit. Thank you for joining me today and I use my cooking as a way to get closer to my family and I hope that does the same for you. So with all of that, salud! Salud. Salud. To learn more about my recipes or to purchase my cookbook, please visit azorianbreenbean.com.